Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 14. In this tutorial we are going to create the ability to control our ammo count so we can't fire a weapon if we have no ammo and we take away ammo when we do actually fire our weapon. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in the series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing I want to do with the ammo control is to stop ourselves being able to fire our weapon when we have zero ammo. So when we start the game, obviously we have zero. So we're going to have to control when we do that. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's go to, I think maybe our global. It's global ammo that we need. So let's head into global ammo for now. And if you remember, this ammo count is basically what controls the amount of ammo we have. So when we get an ammo pickup, we end up adding, I think it's 10 at the moment. So we're gonna to have to use this to some degree to be able to control how much ammo we have and when we can and can't fire our weapon. So if we go to handgun fire and scroll all the way up, there is nothing really in this script which says you have this much ammo or you have zero ammo or whatever. And ultimately, it means that because there's nothing here, it doesn't ever reference it, we're able to fire even though we have zero ammo. So that ultimately means that our global ammo script needs to be modified. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but I kind of want to bring in another variable so we can constantly see how much ammo we have within our inspector panel. So let's go to handgun fire and let's go here and let's add in a new variable. So public int, obviously it's going to be an integer simply because ammo is always going to be a whole number. Uh, public int and we'll call this one pistol ammo. Now the reason I've called it pistol ammo is because if we go into global ammo I actually want to rename this ever so slightly because we're going to have different ammo types. Uh, so when we get round to having like a shotgun or a sniper, something like that, we're going to need to have different ammo types. Uh, so what we'll do for now is, although we've got this set, pistol ammo, what we're going to do down here in void update is we're going to say pistol ammo equals global ammo dot ammo count semicolon. And this will change um, later on in this tutorial. Like I say, it won't be called ammo count. We'll probably call it pistol ammo count. Uh, but either way, we're still going to be making everything flow through correctly. So we're checking what our pistol ammo value is at this point, which means that if we do not have enough ammo, then we cannot run this section here. So we need to nest this if statement inside another if statement. So we can say, if, and in brackets, pistol ammo is less than one. So if it's zero or negative, hopefully it should never be a negative, uh, then it means that we, in fact, what we'll do is we'll say, instead of less than, we'll go greater than zero. So basically, if it is greater than zero, then we can actually fire. So if we put the open curly bracket there, delete this close curly bracket, and then place that close curly bracket below here and it should automatically indent it. So that means that this if statement or these two if statements are all nested inside this one. So theoretically, if we save this now and head back into Unity and let it compile and press play, we won't be able to fire our weapon now. As we can see, awesome. So, let's wait until we have some ammo spawn, let's pick it up, and then we'll be able to fire. So, ammo should be dropping any moment now. Now, where is it? There it is. So, ammo picked up, and we can now fire. Awesome. So, we know that works. So before we go any further, let's now modify global ammo to reflect a little more on it being pistol ammo. 
Now the ammo text can stay the same because I think we're going to display our ammo in the same place no matter what ammo we're actually using. Uh, but for now, let's call this pistol ammo count. And I've changed the A to a capital A. So that means that this is now relevant to a pistol. So pistol ammo count needs changing there. And that does also mean that within handgun fire, we need to change it here as well. So now this handgun fire is relating to the handgun or pistol that we've got. So let's save that. Let's head back into global ammo. And then let's go down a little further and let's get a couple of things into place here. Let's add in some variables for different ammo types. Although we're not going to use them in this tutorial, we're still preparing for the future. So public, uh, static, int, and it'll be shot, gun, ammo, count. Uh, let's have public, static, int, uh, sniper, ammo, count. And let's add in public, static, Int, and let's just have SMG ammo count. So we've, we're going to have three extra weapons at least within this series. So for now, this is all we're really going to need. Like I say, we're not going to use them in this tutorial, but we will get around to them a little later on. Now, next thing we have to do is in ammo collection, we're going to have to change this global ammo dot ammo count once again. Um, what I think we'll do is each ammo container is going to have 10 of each type of ammo. So what we'll do is we'll change this single line to pistol ammo count plus equals 10. I'm going to copy that line of code, place it a couple more times, and then we'll change it to shotgun ammo count, sniper ammo count, and SMG ammo count and save that script. So now all of our scripts are all linking together. So random drop obviously won't have anything to do with it because all that's doing is just generating where the ammo drops. That's fine. The ammo collection is giving us 10 of each ammo type. We may end up doing grenades as well at some point. So if we do, we just need to modify that. Global ammo is basically showing still on our screen what we have and it's keeping track of all the ammo types and the handgun fire obviously is keeping our handgun in check so we can fire it whenever we have ammo. So what happens when we use up a, a piece of ammo? Is, is that how you say it? A piece of ammo? I don't know. Uh, so we've got one shot. That means that this script now has to talk back to global ammo and tell pistol ammo count that we've actually fired one shot. So let's go down here to fire handgun and obviously is firing true yep that's good we fire it uh we play the animation gunshot i'm thinking as soon as we play that gunshot sound we should remove one from the ammo on pistol so let's do that right here let's say global ammo dot pistol ammo count minus equals one semicolon and save so just a couple of quick lines of code in scripts can actually control your ammo, well, perfectly, really. So let's test this out now, and then we'll move on to one final thing before the end of this tutorial. Um, so obviously I'm clicking the mouse and we can't fire, so let's wait here to see where our ammo will drop. Any second now it'll fall. There we are, so ammo dropping. Oh, there it is. So let's pick up our ammo and let's fire. And there we go, you can see our ammo is decreasing. And now we can't fire anymore. Excellent. So our ammo control mechanics work perfectly. So there is one more thing I wanted to do before we ended this uh, tutorial. And I want to put on a quick bit of UI on screen so we can see where our weapon is actually pointing. So at the moment, it looks like it's just pointing into midair. Um, we're probably going to advance this a little further later on. Uh, but for now, I just want to have some UI as a, a little rectangle. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. 
Uh, I want to keep it centered. Yep, that's fine. Position is going to be zero, zero. Uh, the width and height I'm going to have is probably about five by five. And hopefully we should see right in the middle of our screen. There we are. That is currently where we are looking. And I guess you could take this a little further. You could probably reduce it a little bit and rotate it on the Y a bit. If I zoom out, you'll be able to see. Uh, not the Y, probably the um, Z. So I'm going to have it as 45 degrees. So it's like that. And I guess, you know, if you want to go and have a bit of fun, you could duplicate it again and remove the Z. So it looks like a bit of a star in the middle now. There we go. So realistically, all that is at the moment is just a quick way of us being able to determine where our weapon is pointing. And because it is in the middle of the screen, that is exactly what we want to see. So it should. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. So we can see we're aiming at the tree. Yeah, perfect. So that's pretty much how we're going to go uh, with some UI. Like I say, we'll probably change it a little as we go further on. I just wanted something in place for now. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our first enemy. And it's at this point where things really start getting interesting, simply because you don't have to necessarily bring in the same enemy I do. It's entirely up to you what enemy you bring in, but the basis of it and the functionality is going to be exactly the same. So, until that next tutorial with some enemies, thanks for watching, guys.